Here's our next example of how to deal with conservation of energy in something that's uh, very familiar to most of us, the roller coaster. And let's say that's a car is sitting here at the very top of the roller coaster. It's just been pulled up to the very highest height. And then it just barely moves as it goes across. So we can just assume that the velocity is zero. And then it starts down the roller coaster over and over again. And so what is the velocity of the the car when it gets to this point right there. And what's interesting is it really doesn't matter what happens between here and here. All of this doesn't matter. Whatever that looks like makes no difference. If there's no friction, and we're going to, in this case, say mu equals zero, just ignore friction, then we only have to worry about the initial state and the final state. And again, the equation that energy initial equals energy final so that we have the work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy equals the potential energy final plus the kinetic energy final plus any energy lost due to friction. And then, of course, right away we determine what we don't have. There's no work being put into the system. That happened before we get to the very top, so we can just ignore that. No friction means no energy lost. No initial velocity means we have no initial kinetic energy, and I guess that's it. We're done. Now, we can even make it a little bit easier by arbitrarily calling this zero height. So even though we have a height reference to the ground, it's the difference in the height that matters. It's the difference between this height and that height. Notice if I take 20 minus 10, I get the same result as if I go 10 minus zero. So if I call this the reference height, then I can say that the initial height, h initial, is equal to 10 meters. And I can say that h final is equal to 0 meters. I don't have to do that, but it just makes the equation a little bit easier. So I can say that we have 0 final potential energy. So I have initial potential energy, I have final kinetic energy, and that's how we're going to solve the problem. So we have mgh initial equals one half mv final squared. Notice that the m cancels out. And then solving that for v final, I multiply both sides by two. So I get two gh initial equals v final squared. And then finally, we can say that v final is equal to the square root of two gh initial. And that's actually a very, um, very common result when we solve for velocities and kinetic and energies. And so notice that the square root of 2gh is going to appear quite a bit in the next so many chapters. All right, now we just plug in the numbers. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times the height difference, 10 meters. And that will tell us how fast the roller coaster will be moving when it gets to that point. Of course, ignoring friction. So we have... Um, 196, take the square root of that, is exactly 14, so that would be 14 meters per second. And that's how you use the conservation of energy to determine what happens on a roller coaster.